May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be always acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. Amen. The Gospel reading for this morning is known as the parable of the laborers in the vineyard. Parables are little stories that start out so familiar and are so comfortable. Everyone nods their head in recognition as they listen. Everyone can see themselves playing a part in the story that's being shared. The problem with parables is that we think we know where the story is going, but Jesus always has other ideas. Jesus gets right to the end of the story and then yanks the carpet out from under us and we find ourselves completely turned around, doing an unexpected 180, landing hard with surprise. And like most falls, we find our pride and our preconceived notions upended and a bit bruised. In this parable, an owner goes out to hire some day laborers to help him in his vineyard. He goes out at dawn, hires some men, and tells them he will provide them with the agreed upon daily wage. He goes out again and again and again and promises each group that he will pay them what is right for their labor. Finally, in the last hour of the day, he goes out one more time and hires those whom no one else wanted to hire. When it's time to pay them, he starts at the end of the line with those who are hired last, giving each man the daily wage. The landowner finishes payment with those who were hired first thing that morning. And much to their surprise and anger, the first hired were given what they promised. Not more and not less. They were given what they agreed to. The amount given the first group hired was not in dispute. They were not upset about what they got. What was so frustrating, what was the real thorn in their side, was that there were others who they felt undeserving who got the same amount. It wasn't what they received, but what others received that really stuck in their craw. These have worked only one hour, and you have made them equal to us, they tell the landowner. Are you envious because I am generous, the landowner asks them. Well, yes, and that is exactly what the other laborers are. They are envious. They have been at this job longer, worked harder, and under more difficult circumstances, yet the newcomers receive the same payment. Where is the fairness in that? To understand this parable, to understand what Jesus was getting at, at the issue that he was trying to address with the disciples, you have to know what happens immediately before and immediately after our parable for today. Immediately preceding this, Jesus has a conversation with a rich man who asks Jesus what he must do to have eternal life. Jesus tells him to keep the commandments, and the young man says that he has kept them ever since he was little. Jesus tells him to then sell all his possessions and give the proceeds to the poor. The young man goes away sad because he has so much to lose. Peter then asks Jesus what the disciples' reward will be, because after all, they had left everything to follow Jesus. They were the first to follow Jesus. Didn't that matter? Wasn't that reason enough to receive something extra when all was said and done? Immediately after this parable, Jesus and the disciples are walking to Jerusalem and Jesus is telling them that he will be arrested and crucified. The mother of James and John tries to get Jesus to give her sons some preferential treatment, 
asking that they be seated at his right and left hands in his coming kingdom. Can you imagine? It was like fighting within a family about who is in the will before grandpa dies. Who sh should those adopted into the family be treated the same as those born into it? Should they receive an equal portion of grandpa's estate? Matthew's gospel was written for a mixed congregation, a congregation of longtime Jesus followers and those who were new to Jesus. God's answers to these questions, both surprising and wonderful and a little bit hard to take. And God's answers to these questions is so obviously different from the answers that we would come up with. God's answer is yes. Those newcomers, those who haven't worked as long or as hard or who had less of an understanding of what was required of them deserve not just a portion of the estate. They deserve the same portion of the estate as any member who preceded them into the family. It does not matter if someone is born into the family or is adopted into it. It does not matter if one joined from the beginning or comes into the family in the last hour of its existence. All are equally important. All are equally considered. And all are equally loved. God's estate is not limited. And God's grace is not some item found in a will. Who receives grace is not about who is deserving or undeserving, who worked harder or longer for the family of God. Yet that is often how we treat it. In our limited and finite minds, we have trouble conceiving of an infinite grace. We want things to be fair but God is so much more than fair. We want things to be just, but God is so much more than just. God is abundantly generous. God is infinitely loving. God is infinitely forgiving. God is an equal opportunity grace giver. Barbara Brown Taylor, writes that the parable of the laborer in the vineyard is like cod liver oil. You know Jesus is right. You know it must be good for you. But it just doesn't make it any easier to swallow. Perhaps this parable is hard to swallow because we so desperately want to matter. And in our desperation in wanting to matter, we believe that we can only matter more if someone else matters less. Perhaps this parable is hard to swallow because our focus is on the wrong thing and on the wrong characters. The parable isn't about the laborers in the vineyard and how they were cheated. This is a parable about God. This is a parable about how any of us and all of us are received into God's family, a family where everyone rejoices in the love and grace that are given not just to one, not just to some, but to all in equal measure. And that, my friends, is truly good news. Amen.